Hello everyone. I hope this message finds you fit and fine. My name is Shashank Tyagi and I welcome you all to Study IQ. Keeping your prelims in mind and challenges which any students face with Indian polity, we are starting this full-fledged series on Lakshmikant on this YouTube channel. And the title you can see is Kanthast, based on ancient learning practice, where relationship between master and student was such that purpose was that every component of discussion should be absorbed into the mind of student so that it can be readily used and this is what you need now indian polity lakshmikant most sought after book right but if you look at the kind of questions which upsc is asking so two three questions are more trickier you know means they cannot be solved just by uh, cramming the provisions understanding polity in terms of some articles in constitution and what they say no upsc also expects you to understand the principles on on whose basis these these particular provisions were made in our constitution right now consider consider the weightage of indian polity it's like 18 to 24 questions are expected out of 100 you can expect 40 marks 20 questions multiply by 2 marks 40 marks and keeping an eye on the cut off say 100 on an average so if 100 is the cut off 40 marks you can score by having clear insight on indian polity now what are the problems which generally students face one is understanding lakshmikant it means some topics they have you know good command on but on some topics they miss on certain understandings means reading it all but when it comes to practicing mcqs they find you know uh, sometimes score is not as expected right missing on reading between the lines this is the beauty of indian polity there's lot of scope of interpreting and upsc knows how to frame a statement so that you can be on in trap okay and that is why in the series you are going to listen this word you know many times trap question trap statement and i'm going to ask one statement whether the statement is true or false and now then it becomes your duty that you have to respond you are watching this video but you have to respond note it down ki oh according to me this should be the answer okay because psychology has this rule if you make a mistake and you get the correct answer right away then more chances are that you are not going to forget it because you committed a mistake and then you learned now missing on connecting with dynamic dimensions as you know that indian polity is static as well as dynamic a static means something which is written in some provision some law that is static but dynamic means updations so updations need to be you know on your tips too now sometimes what happen the students are not able to rationalize their time means which topics are more important right and how you can understand it when you have a key clear eye on dynamic aspect if certain provisions are in use again and again it's a clear indication that we can expect one question from there right figure out easiest way or tricks to actually learn these topics but i always say tricks are secondary okay tricks are there to increase your recalling power right first foundation need to be built right polity is a very logical subject means one thing connects to another So when I'm making this video, we have roughly three months for the prelims, right? And we have to attack both aspects, static as well as dynamic. And our approach would be prelim centric. You will have these lectures here, PPTs slash PDF will be uploaded in your Telegram group. You will have flow chart, pictorial representations, tips and tricks, and MCQs because ultimately, this is how we need to score, right? now glimpse of these videos which are lined up today we are going to discuss 
you can say three crucial articles of historical background of Indian constitution. So let's have a start. First chapter of Lakshmikanth is historical underpinnings of Indian constitution, right? Now, if I say that constitution was made in two years, 11 months, 18 days, made, then I would like to differ on this point. Constitution was not made in this time period. It was framed in this time period. Yes, that I can agree upon. That we had this constituent assembly, they gathered and they used best of their insights and they framed our constitution. But when I say made, it means you should also consider the roots of the provisions which are enshrined in our constitution. They were not made from the scratch. There were many laws which were already there in India, Indian Peninsula, during this British administration. So it becomes important for us to understand how, how was the history of Indian constitution, you know, how it was weaved, right? So when it comes to this chapter, you know, this chapter is considered most boring chapter. No matter how many times we read 1773 Regulation Act, Pitts India Act, Morley Minto Reform, but sometimes, you know, one particular dimension or other point, we often miss, right? Because approach of this chapter, you know, generally student have is to cram these points, right? We are not going to cram. We are going to understand the logic of these provisions, right? How one particular law connects to another particular law, okay? Now, in modern history, you have this chapter, Advent of Europeans, right? And within this, th that particular chapter, you read about Advent of Britishers into India. A private company, English East India Company, entered into Indian Peninsula to have some trading relationships here. Along with them, they had one paper. That paper was Royal Charter. Charter means a permission which was granted by the Queen of Britain that, oh, you have my permission as well as protection. Now continue trade. And in this particular permission, English East India Company asked for monopoly. It means no other British company will engage in trade in this area and such monopoly was granted by crown. Some of you might be thinking, why this monopoly was given to this English East India Company by, uh, by the crown rule? And one reason is that shareholders of this English East India Company were for the most influential people of uh, British, you know, at that particular time. Those who were living in Britain, having strong connections with the, you know, the British administration. Now the point is, it was not one-sided, means it was a quid pro quo relationship. They were paying huge amount to British Crown. If I, if I give you an idea that comparing the currency rates as of now, the amount which used to be paid annually was 46.1 million pound and it is equivalent to roughly uh, 460 crore rupees. I'm considering the inflation and currency value as at, that, at this point of time. So this much amount was given to get this monopoly right. Now, now English East India Company came as a trader but extended as a territorial power. Battle of Plassey and later the crucial battle of Buxar changed the game in favor of English East India Company. As we saw, Treaty of Allahabad, Allahabad Treaty. And after this Allahabad Treaty, this private company, this private company got Diwani rights. When I use the word Diwani rights, it means now this company was having power to collect revenues from the subjects in that area. And in which area? Bengal, Orissa, Bihar, big provinces, right? Now, they got the, this right to revenue collection. 
but and uh, it was you know projected that now fortunes of english east india company are going to multiply but more than english east india company the officers got rich there was massive corruption within this private company and this alerted british administration and this british administration now thought now is the time to regulate the affairs of this private company in india and from there this first step means regulating act 1773 came into being at this particular time there was huge debt of of uh, on this particular company uh, from the side of bank of england british administration was well aware that we have given monopoly rights to this english rishnia company and it is it is strategically important for us to have a hold in this area so only way is to make this company run but now this company won't run on the whims and fancies of the officers this company will be run by active involvement of british empire and within this backdrop we saw this regulating act 1773 there were three prominent you can say objectives three prominent point you can remember one was to regulate the affairs because lot of corruption was there right second recognize the political and administrative rise of the company because by that time it was quite clear we gave this company charter to engage in trading relationship but now this company is having political powers diwani rights right so after this british empire accepted theek okay, hai we are accepting it third foundation of central administration in india now what does this point mean as i told you diwani rights right so by this time british empire and this uh, british east india company got hold in bombay madras and bengal province a private company having hold in th- these three areas became a territorial power now british administration wanted some kind of centralization means there should be one point of contact which is having more power than other provinces means bombay and madras now apart from this we are going to come to this discussion of centralization right through a map but apart from this you should also remember certain features because sometimes questions are asked in match the following or statement wise on these features first feature you should know is that position of governor of bengal was turned into governor general of bengal please remember the word is governor general of bengal not governor general of india right it means there will be governor of madras there will be governor of bombay but governor of bengal is now governor general of bengal right a step towards centralization of administration now establishment of supreme court in kolkata and i personally feel that lot of scope is there to have some trap questions from this particular provision itself and some provisions are not even mentioned in lakshmikant how can you know question be framed for example if i make a statement that as per 1773 regulation act supreme court was established in kolkata so that statement is correct when it comes to judges in supreme court of calcutta which was started after 1770 through Regul- regulating act these were appointed by governor general of bengal do you think that statement would be correct what do you think i'm saying a supreme court was established in calcutta as per provisions mentioned in 1773 regulation act. actually that supreme court was established in 1774 as per this act which 1773 regulation act and you should also be you know clear in mind that this act is being passed where in british parliament okay and british parliament is passing this act to regulate a private company which is which has gained political power as well as commercial power in uh, this indian peninsula okay now i'm saying judges in this supreme court are being appointed by governor general of bengal as per 73 1773 regulation act that statement would be true or false 
that statement would be false. Okay. And if I say another statement I am making, adjudication power of Supreme Court which was established as per 1773 Regulation Act was extended to British subjects as well as natives in India. So that statement would be true or false, what do you think? And when I say natives in India, you can also specify natives in British provinces or you can say natives in say Bombay, Madras and Kolkata provinces. I have made the statement you know more specific. Now what do you think? Most of you would say, oh, ye kya question hai? lollipop hai. Kyo? Because Supreme Court hai. Provinces we have just talked about, Bombay, Bengal, Madras. So it's obvious that whether it is Brit whether we are talking about British subjects, Britishers in these provinces or natives living here, the power should be you know extended to all. But that statement would be false. Because that power was not given in 1773 Regulating Act. So these are reading between the lines. These are the areas where UPSC can lay a trap. That is why sometimes questions are asked from this particular chapter but statements are like students have read but they are not able to answer. right? Now prohibited the servants to actually take price because this was the major cause. right? Strengthen the control of the British government. It means now court of directors. Court of directors are representatives of English East India Company. These are the key players in the affairs of the company. But they were given direction that you have to report on the revenue, civil and military affairs in India to the British government. Right? So you can easily remember Governor to Governor General of Bengal, Supreme Court case. Then prohibition means corruption, prohibition on corruption means you cannot purchase, you know, you cannot have gifts from natives and then strengthen control. Now, we have used the word centralization of power. Just take a look over this map. Bombay, Bengal, Madras. As per 1773 Regulation Act, Governor General of Bengal was also given an executive council of four members. When I say executive council of four members, it means this council is going to support Governor General of Bengal in taking crucial decisions. But the twist is, earlier Governor of Bengal used to take decisions on its own. But now after four members in executive council, the, the decision used to be taken on the basis of majority. So Governor General of Bengal, Mr. Vernon Hastings were not quite happy with that provision. But the point I am trying to make here is, the name is Executive Council, but it had both executive as well as legislative power. When I say legislative power, it means to make law executive, to ensure implementation of law through you know, various offices. So it had both powers, right? Now, similarly, Governor of Bombay also had power, executive as well as legislative with respect to this province. Madras Governor also had powers, executive, legislative with respect to Madras province. Now, some of you might be thinking, then what is the centralization? So now, Governor of Bengal is now Governor General of Bengal. One G is also added. It means the legislative powers of Bengal Governor, legislative powers of Madras Governor, some powers are being transferred to Governor General of Bengal. That is why it is said that it is the first step towards centralization of administration in India. Right? Please remember this, that is why I have put in bold because UPSC has asked this question, directly putting it in a statement. Now, in the year 1774, Supreme Court was established, as I told you. Right? Now, its jurisdiction was in Bombay, Madras and Bengal. But there will be a twist here. 1773 Regulation Act was saying its 
its uh, influence or its its education will be a will will be in all three provinces but in the next act itself this particular provision got limited it means if a question is asked that the uh, with respect to education power of supreme court established under 1773 regulation act extended till so as per this act yes available in all three but if same thing is asked and with and the word, and the uh, and the year they are mentioning is say 1781 1782 then meaning of statement would would change because by then power of this supreme court was curtailed these are some intricacies which you know sometimes students miss and upsc play on this and we are also going to tell you why this why this power was curtailed you need not to just cram now it was court of record its power extended to both civil criminal cases but just take a look only over british subjects not natives trap is here only on british subjects in 1773 regulation act later this power was expanded but at that point of time only on british subject what is the meaning of british subject british subject means british people living in this territory apart from this so british people living in this territory along with this employees of english east india company and their servants okay so all of them were covered if it, it means if some indians were uh, actually working in english is english east india company then naturally they will come under the adjudication of this particular supreme court but not natives okay and some of you might be thinking then why we are saying it as supreme court my friends this is first step of regulating the affairs of a private company by british parliament first step and they want to regulate this private company because this has created headache to the british empire right judges were to come from england so the question i asked that who is going to appoint the judges crown is going to appoint the judges okay not governor general of bengal the first chief justice was sir eliza mf now of what happened after the 1773 regulation act mr warren hastings were not happy he filed you know so many he he sent so many letters to the london what you have done i am a i am a you know key you can say member of this private english east india company and my duty is to give profits to the the court of directors and you have actually you know put so many lit- limitations over me by having this institution of supreme court here this is wrong because my friends this supreme court establishment of supreme court after the 1773 regulation act was a first institution in india which was independent of private company that is this that was english east india company because the supreme court was not actually going to work under english east india company otherwise in all three provinces all the offices were being run under east india company so now warren has said thought this is like you are establishing a parallel powerhouse i am not going to agree on this so he was having many powerful friends in britain they also you know pushed his agenda to the british administration finally they agreed they said okay finally you are the one who is going to actually control the administration there you are the one who are who is going to give the profits and from this profit british empire is having high amount of taxes take we are agreeing on these grievances and that's how amending act 1781 was made now to rectify the defects of regulating act 1773 so what defects we are talking about see demarcate relations between supreme court and governor general in council so it was like now crown is saying lo tathastu krapa barsegi now division has happened it settled the question of jurisdiction of the supreme court 
Now, this is, a, this is just a line, but there's a scope of question here. What limitation was imposed? This is not mentioned here. What limitation? Number one. Now, Supreme Court cannot intervene into revenue affairs of English East India Company. When it comes to revenue affairs, Governor General along with his, her council is going to have the power. Second, the Britishers, the British subject means British East India Company's employees, officers, they got exemption from this Supreme Court. Now, some of you might be thinking, what is this? Then why you are you're calling it Supreme Court? But because when you use the word Supreme Court, what comes into your mind? India's Supreme Court, which is like, you know, um, considering the previous, you know, so many judgments or you can say, uh, keeping into mind the legal history of India in post-independence period. In, whenever you say Supreme Court, Supreme Court is like, you know, among the most powerful organizations in India, right? Most powerful political organizations. Political word I'm using because it's judiciary and judiciary is part of this whole political structure. Now, but this Supreme Court was not that powerful. Whatever power it had, it was curtailed for the benefit of the company. Now, what were the key provisions? First, change in the powers of Supreme Court, as I told you. It means earlier came within the jurisdiction of Supreme Court, when it comes to servants of the company, told you, now exempted. This is what I've just told you, right? non interference in revenue matters, I've just told you. Warren Hastings said, no interference nahi chalega. British Crown said, no nahi chalega. But our interest should be, you know, should continue in India. Shift appellate jurisdiction court to Governor Council. What does it mean? It means that appellate jurisdiction means if lower court has pronounced a judgment that you are given this much punishment, then you, by using appellate jurisdiction, you can appeal in higher court. Right now, since Supreme Court was established after 1773 Revolution Act, appellate jurisdiction came under Supreme Court. From all three provinces, appeals were coming to Supreme Court. The Governor General was saying, "Ki hum aise hi hai pe. We have worked so hard. So now, the appeals went from provincial courts to Governor General in Council. Right? Khush kar diya Warren Hastings ko. Now." Assertion on the application of personal laws, because after 1773 Regulation Act, I have just told you, British subject, not natives. But at this point, this need arise that, oh, we have to take into consideration the natives also. But natives can be, you know, uh, their, the judgments related to natives should consider their personal laws. It means laws, legal systems related to their respective religions. Only British codes won't suffice when it comes to handling their cases, right? Because if they are not going to agree on the judgments, then what is the use of that judicial system, right? So bring inclusiveness was the objective, bringing inclusiveness was the objective of this point. And inclusiveness for the benefit of Britishers, right? So Hindu law, for example, Mohammedan law, need to be incorporated. Now, after this act, there were still various defects in the system which was running in India. Corruption was still going on. Company was minting money, but British administration was feeling like we are being sidelined. So keeping into this, you know, tackling this maladministration, Pitts India Act 1784 was made. The most famous, you can say, provision of Pitts India Act is dividing the working of company into political and commercial affairs, recognizing both affairs separately and having two separate bodies to report on these aspects. So distinguished between commercial and political functions and their word was used double government or dual government. Why? Because court of directors now was responsible for commercial functions. How much revenue, how much profit you are generating. And board of control, this was a new body which was made. 
responsible for political affairs. And it was Board of Control which was representative of British government. And Court of Director, a representative of company. How you can easily remember? Companies may directors hote hain. Right? Directors are the key partners of a company. So you can easily remember, oh, Court of Director means commercial functions. Inka matlab profit. What their objective is to earn profit, to report profit. And Board of Control, government is the one who is having major power to control. So that is why this was British government. Right? Representative of British government. Right? So they were appointed by British, right? Now, I also find a beautiful scope there, beautiful scope of question. Now, <clears throat> scope is, if I say that Board of Control was headed by Secretaries of State. So, there's a, there's a statement that which of the following statements are true as per Pitts India Act 1784. Okay. So this is the key statement and within which you can have one, two, three. So first statement is that Board of Control was headed by Secretary of State. Full stop. Now tell me that statement would be true or false. If you have gone through this chapter, so uh, you must have read about Government of India Act 1858 from where we see crown rule in India. And there you read about Secretary of State for India. A new office is being created. This office will be in Britain and will be responsible for the affairs in India. We are going to talk about it. But the point I want to make is that when you open your Lakshmi Kant, Secretary of State for India is you know, more focused when you read about 1858, Government of India Act 1858. So many students would think, oh, it may be possible that student, this, this examiner is trying to have a, you know, uh, playing a trick here. Kuch lag hai ki examiner fir ki le hai. Secretary of State to abhi nahi ho sakta. Secretary of State was created in Government of India Act 1858, hai na? Aisa hi Ek to hota hai galat. Ek hota sarasar. Us sarasar galat ho jayega. Agar aisa soch rahe ho. Why? Because Board of Control was presided by Secretary of State. And I have not said Secretary of State for India. I just, have just used Secretary of State. So in Government of India Act 1858, this, this office which was created was Secretary of State for India. And this is just Secretary of State. And in U, UPSC polity questions, UPSC play on these small, small words. Now, what were other provisions of Pitts India Act? As Governor General of Bengal was not happy with this fact that you have made these four members here and all of them are you actually, you know, engaging into, actively engaging into decision making based on consensus. I'm Governor General of Bengal at least, give me some more power. British Parliament said, Tathastu, jao kripa barse ki. Maan liya tumara. Reduce the strength of Governor General Council to three members. And Governor General was given right to veto. It means, even if majority of these members are saying that uh, we are in favor of this law. So earlier, consensus was ruling. But now, Governor General, General would say, oh, have you read, read the new act, Pits India Act? Now I have veto power. Hamari marji nahi hai. I'm not agreeing on this. If I'm not agreeing on this, you cannot allow. Right? Place the Indian affairs under the direct control of British government through Board of Control, as the word is control. Companies, territories in India were called British possessions in India. This happened for the first time. Right? This, this statement, a question was asked on this statement specifically earlier. Governor's Council were established in Madras and Bombay. My friends, I hope you remember. 1773 Regulation Act. Through this Executive Council, four members created where Governor General of Bengal, Governor of Bengal, 
given status as Governor General of Bengal and four people were given. But these fellow were not given any supportive system. Now, Krapa in par bhi bas barsi aur inko bhi humne council de di. Now, the Board of Control took care of civil military affairs, as I told you, political affairs. So, the civil and military affairs come under political affairs. So, that's why this is being taken care of by Board of Control, right? And commercial affairs are being taken care of by Court of Directors. Now, you can see it. So, I asked this question from here. So, Board of Control is having six members, right? Six members. Please remember, these kind of facts are also asked. Headed by Secretary of State, Board President, then Chancellor of Exchequer, taking care of this particular uh, position is going to take care of revenue. Now, four Privy Councillors, these were other members of this Board of Control, which were appointed by British administration. Now, in this dual system, dual system, because Board of Control, Court of Director, the company was represented by told you, Code of Director and British Government by Board of Control. Now, this act mandated all civil officers disclose the property. Yeah, this was another important that if you are got if you got appointed as officer in English Asian company, you have to report about your property within two months. Now, since you are aspiring to be part of Indian administration, there is a similar clause in India's case as well. When you are going to join Lapsna, so you are going to sign various forms in the orientation program. You will be intimated that within this time you have to give all the details of movable, immovable properties you have. So that a track can be, you know, put over you. How much wealth you have created within two, three years, right? Hope you can understand the objective. Now, as I told you, there's a difference between Secretary of State and Secretary of State for India. So this is Secretary of State for India. This position was created. Government of India Act 1858, right? But we are still in 1784. There's a difference. Other provisions. Governor General's Council strength was reduced to three men, members, already told you, and one member, one member is going to be Commander-in-Chief, Commander-in-Chief of British Crown's Army. Right? It means if we are giving some relaxations to Governor General of Bengal, we are also keeping a tab Right, keeping accountability. Governor General was given right to vote, already told you. Members reduced from four to three, but right to veto was given. If if Governor General of Bengal is not agreeing, then that decision cannot pass. Simple. The presidencies of Madras and Bombay became subordinate to the Bengal. It means more legislative power transferred towards this Governor General of Bengal. In effect, Calcutta became the capital and the British possessions in India. Remember, British possessions in India, this, this particular phrase was used for the first time in 1784 Pitts India Act. Now, what were the drawbacks? First of all, not much clarity was there between the functions of Board of Control and Court of Directors. And that's why, now, Governor General of Bengal made good use of this opportunity. So, there was no clarity on the boundaries and Governor General had to serve the two masters. That we have to we have to serve the court of directors as well because the we, because Governor General of Bengal is ultimately ultimately serving a private company. So the key investors are there sitting in Britain. So that particular person, this office has to report to them how much profit you have generated, what are your strategies in future. And there is another second master, which is British government. There were no clear boundaries between responsibilities, as I told you. Governor General had to take spot decision, exercising discretion. So whenever there is you know, no clarity between these two power centers, so who used the power? Governor General of Bengal used the power, obviously, right? Because in India, we are moving towards centralization. And who is the key power here? Governor General of Bengal. Now, take a look over these questions, quite direct question. Under which territory of the company was first named British property? I have told you, Pitts India Act, 1784, right? Now, second question is for you. Just read the question and attempt. Its explanation as well as PDFs will be available to you in this Telegram group. 
I'm there for you, Shashank Tiagi for you on these platforms. If I could be of any help in any doubt, you can reach out to me. And whenever you have this feeling, you know, you have read Lakshmikan so many times that you are having this feeling that Mehi Lakshmikan Thu, the kind of feeling which uh, Nawazuddin Siddiqui was having in sacred games. Apne ko lagta hai ki apuni god hai. Agar aisa lagne lage, so uh, you can always reach out and uh, there's, there's so much, you know, gray areas in Indian polity that I'll frame a particular statement and ask you your response. In five minutes of our conversation, it is sure that you will have at least three, four points or three, four ways to look at that particular dimension in Indian polity, which you have never looked before. That's a promise. So see you in the next video then. Keep learning, keep growing. Shashank Tiagi for you, signing off.